Hi everyone and welcome. I'm preparing to head down into my wormery to take care of a couple things, but before I do, I figured I'd come in here on my tracking spreadsheet just to quickly overview what we're going to do today and also just to indicate how I, uh, how I keep track of the work that I've either done in the past or I have planned for the future. And um, for those of you who've seen this document in the past, you'll know that I've not really done a great deal in terms of trying to forecast my future work. And that's probably the one major new addition to this is that I've been attempting now to sort of look into the future, to try to map out the work that I want to try to accomplish over the next few days. So uh, those are the indicators that you see here, which is something I've not done before, which is just sort of uh, my sort of homespun way of putting a kind of an incomplete unchecked checkbox in here indicating incomplete work or future work to be done and um, the work that needs to be done today listed on the under the column that correlates to today's date are these three checkbox that you see here and what I've got planned really quickly for today is um, number one down here at the very bottom is going to be the first real record active record for this new bin that I built five days ago and um, it's really just going to start out with one of these indications showing that it's been populated and the bin the bins going to be populated with worms that I plan to extract out of these two bins over here these two bins over here are now at the ages of 92 and 56 days of age and according to my best estimates those are two very very highly populated bins each with something in the neighborhood of 5,000 worms in them and my hope was to try to maybe pull about a thousand or so worms out of each so that this bin down here can be launched with um, a population of about 2,000 worms so that it could be started off as the newest of my red wiggler bins and then um, the other work that I had planned to do in these bins after removing worms and relocating them to my newest um, bin that'll be starting today is uh, apply a feeding because it's been 14 days now since these two bins were fed and you can imagine with um, 5,000 worms in them each they are uh, very likely hungry by now <laughs> so I don't want to um, let too much time lapse because um, even though I did give very generous feedings to those bins two weeks ago it is quite likely that um, the majority if not all of the food that they were given at that point is gone by now so uh, at the end I'm just gonna plop in some new food to keep those bins going so let's um let's head on down to the wormery I'll make a quick detour to the freezer to grab some food to throw into these uh, bins over here um, and then we'll proceed with the movement of worms into this new bin to get this bin launched and then the feeding of these two active bins over here all right let's get to work okay we're down here in my wormery now and the new bin that we're going to be launching is this one right here I built this as you saw my spreadsheet five days ago so it's been sitting here priming getting ready for the inhabitants and the two bins that we're going to get the volunteers from, the bins that I think have about 5,000 worms in them each, are these two right up here. So we'll begin by scooping worms out and then replacing the vacated space with some food. So let's get to work. Now this is the older of the two bins. This is the bin that I believe I had a little bit of difficulty with in terms of excess moisture and that's the reason I've got all these leaves scattered across the top of it the whole idea was to place a whole bunch of dry material in here so that hopefully it would start to soak up some of the excess moisture all right so I'm gonna grab my little yellow tub here and I'm gonna to try to collect some of this leafy matter that's on the top actually let me switch hands here and use my gloved hand to do this this stuff will be great to pile right back on top when we're finished. I just want to kind of get it out of the picture while we're working here to make things easier. So we're already starting to see some of the things that we're covering up the feeding zone. There was this piece of a kind of brown paper bag sort of material. I'm actually kind of surprised that it's intact. But I think the main reason a piece of paper like that would get um, demolished really quickly is if there was a piece, piece of plastic right above it, collecting some of the evaporating moisture and allowing it to drop right onto the paper, making the paper a lot more wet than this piece is. So I think the reason it's surviving is because there's just not as much moisture in this bin as if it, uh, as if it was running with a plastic 
sheet covering it. But if we find that the material is um, starting to steer more towards being too dry at this point, we could always replace the plastic again. But I've got a feeling that um, I've got a feeling that the moisture level might still be a little bit higher than it needs to be. So I'm going to probably continue with uh, covering with only just a piece of paper that we took off in the beginning. So I've got my little other clear plastic tub here that I could place the worms that we collect into. So I think, um, I think I'm just going to go diving right down into the area where the feeding had been applied last. And if we see uh, a good number of worms, we'll just start scooping them out. This bin, I believe, also has a number of slow composting items scattered within it. Pieces of um, mango seed, stuff like that. I'm just, wondering, I'm just wondering if it's been so much time since the last feeding, 14 days ago, that maybe the worms have already depleted what was placed in here and they've already disbanded and scattered. So I don't know what to expect here, really. I'm hoping for the best. I wonder what we'll get if we just sort of scoop right down the middle and try to see if we can get some volunteers that way. Looks like we did pretty good on that first handful. We put some of them in there and see what else we can get it's interesting I put some corn in there and this smells a little bit like corn <laughs> let's see if I can return some of this uncomposted material back to the bin so I'm not hauling out anything from here other than worms if possible it's pretty good for a first handful it does look like we might end up taking a little bit of food with us as we go which ain't a problem should be just fine too. Let's go for a second handful and see what we get. Oh, it looks like we got ourselves another good size handful. I can feel the whole mass moving in my hands. I think here too I'm going to just be pulling out some of these larger bits that come along for the ride. We'll try to limit what we're pulling out of here to worms only if possible. Yeah, it looks like once again we've got ourselves a pretty good haul. Very nice. I think my objective here was to pull out about a thousand worms from each bin if possible. And I mean, if I can get four good sized handfuls like that out of here today, I think we will easily reach a quantity of a thousand worms pretty quickly. Pretty easily. Got some scraps of bedding and whatnot that came along for the ride. I'm just going to remove those here while I can. While it's still pretty easy to do so. Definitely uh, got a good number of worms in here already. I can't say that I've seen many signs of the last feeding that they received other than these corn cur corn kernels that you could see scattered throughout the f the mass of worms well okay I spoke too soon there's a little piece of the paper that the food that they received last time two weeks ago was bundled in but a whole not not a whole lot else I would have to say that this is over a pound already and I mean, I know there's stuff in here, stuff other than worms, there's castings, there's food scraps, little bits of bedding here and there, but I would have to say that the majority of what I pulled out here is, uh, is worms, for sure. So I think we've definitely succeeded in our attempt at getting at least one pound of worms removed from, from this bin. Yeah, I would say for sure. I would say almost certain that there's at least a pound of worms in this container so far. And for some reason, I did sort of have this feeling that this might be the more heavily um, populated bin out of the two worm bins that we're going to be um, tending to today to extract worms from. So I don't mind maybe taking a larger amount from here in order to reach those two pounds that we're trying to get to. 
that we're going to try to launch off the new container with. And look at all these beautiful castings. Looking really good down here. So I think applying the food the way I did last time is a good idea. So I'm going to do it the same way again today. And um, if you didn't see that video, the video I believe was called All Worm Bins in My Worm Wormery Fed or whatever, but it basically consisted of taking a sheet of newspaper like this, resting it in my hand, and then grabbing a handful of food out of my food supply container. And this I guess would amount to about a handful, but I was unable to break it up, but you can see it consists of all kinds of goodies. Bits of strawberry, bits of cucumber, bits of banana peel. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, wrap it in this piece of paper. But you know what, before I do, why don't I sprinkle it with some crushed eggshell. A little grit never hurts when you're feeding your worms. So last time I had created three bundles like this. And I think I'm going to do the same today because it seemed to work quite nicely. Let's get the next one loaded up here. Oops. This one might not be quite as large as the first one was, but that's fine. should be sufficient. I might not wait two weeks again before the next feeding in this case. I might actually check in here sooner. I really didn't see many leftovers from the previous feeding other than those bits of corn. So maybe I did wait a little longer than necessary to come back in here to feed. Luckily that last feeding was pretty generous um, and I can always also be rest assured by knowing that some of these older slower composting food items like these mango seeds, like these avocado pits, all these things will probably outlast most of my feedings by a long shot giving the worms stuff to continue nibbling on even if the um, most recently portion of fast composting food they get given uh, gets depleted quickly. So as I replenish the, um, the feeding zone with some of these older bits and pieces, this looks like a piece of apple that might have also been part of the last feeding. There again, that's those are probably the, um, the main leftovers that we saw from the last feeding, that corn cob, I mean those corn bits, um, and that chunk of apple core but everything else is just tiny scraps and a little bit of the leftover bedding from last time maybe this was part of the last feeding too a banana peel stem which often takes a little while not too long to break down but usually a little longer than just a week or two all right definitely like what i'm seeing here so let's cover up oh, one more mango seed Oh, looks like the stem of a pumpkin. This is also kind of one of our sort of test food items that I try to keep somewhere near the middle so it's easy to bump into it next go around. And I gotta tell you, the material in this bin is really nice. I'm just curious, usually on the outer edges is where I've been checking to try to gauge how the moisture level in the bin is doing it in general. Because right down the middle where the feedings occurred, you would expect for sure that material would be pretty damp from the frozen foods they get emitting a lot of moisture so checking the consistency of the material out on the far edges is probably the better way to see how things are doing in general in the bin and there's still a fair bit of moisture and that's probably the reason there's so many worms hanging out even over there so I think that those dry leaves scattered across the top are probably going to continue to do good in this bin to help absorb some of what appears to be the excess moisture in here. Like you can see, 
even though we had tons and tons of worms down the middle in the feeding area, there's certainly no absence of worms in the outer edges. I'm sure it's got a lot, of, lot to do with the fact that the material is still quite damp and cozy for them out there too. So there's no kind of off limits areas in this bin. Everything's very nice in terms of a good consistent moisture level. So even though I'm not using plastic to cover up with, the moisture is retained very, very nicely in this material. Probably because it's mainly castings at this point. Castings just do such a wonderful job holding on to the moisture. I actually don't feel like we're, in, we're too damp anymore. Any of the stuff that we pulled out, even though it was kind of damp, it all crumbled readily. So I think we're actually um, recovered from what I had originally considered to be excess moisture in this container. So we're dumping back the leafy matter that was covering things up here. And I guess like I do oftentimes, I'm just gonna just gonna return this um, piece of paper to be an indicator to me where I last fed. All right, definitely like what I'm seeing here. Off to bin number two to go get some more volunteers. So now this is the younger of these two bins, and it's um, not quite as high up as far as the level is concerned. Um, you know, I guess partially because it's a, be a little bit behind in terms of just general age of the bin. And, uh, and it just doesn't have all those leaves scattered on top because I wasn't trying to deal with moisture in this bin like I was trying to in the other bin. And here's um, a volunteer plant that sort of started to grow, but at, at some point was unable to continue and wither it out which we will simply use as food for the next go around. Here too, we've got some slow composting food items in this bin too, it seems, some mango seeds. And these I believe were, uh, yeah, these are the rinds of some cantaloupe. And it's so cool how they kind of leave the woodier portions of it and they just nibble out the softer bits in between. So they leave this unusual kind of mesh pattern behind although it's not been nibbled out completely yet. I'm actually a little bit surprised because that was not from the last feeding, that was from the feeding even prior. So those, those cantaloupe rinds go back probably at least three weeks or thereabouts. But I do remember that they were kicking off a really pungent, stinky odor. But at this point, I, I doubt we're gonna sense any of that odor anymore. I hope not, at least. Because we did sense it in both of these bins, and I didn't see it in the last one. So like I said, I believe that that last bin that we just worked on may have a slightly greater population of worms in it than this one. And that, that might be the reason we're just seeing more scraps of food in here from previous feedings. But I'm not too worried about pulling volunteers out of here. I think we should do just fine. I just suspect we might find a little bit more leftovers in here than we did in the last bin. I think this is what I was referring to right here where they've really chewed out all of the softer bits from in between and left the interesting kind of a weave or whatever pattern behind. So let's see if we can get down deep enough to start identifying some volunteers to come out and join the relocation party. I'm definitely bumping into more and more scraps of leftover food from the last feeding, way more than we saw in the previous bin. I guess, you know, confirming for me that this bin probably does have a slightly smaller population of worms in it. So right down here, I think we've already got a good view of some of what we're after here so let's bring this little tub back in and see if we can get our first handful of volunteers that's pretty good not bad let's drop them in here once again i'm just going to see if i can pluck out anything in here that's not necessarily worms some food leftovers that would be easy enough just to remove Is really not a big problem if you bring some leftover foods with your worms when you're relocating them. 
But I just figured if possible, maybe I would put this on the scale and if I can feel pretty confidently that the majority of what's in here, maybe 90, 95% of it is certainly worms, then, then I can um, be more confident in whatever reading I get when I do put it on the scale. So it's pretty neat, right? This is some of the more of the paper that was used to wrap the food last time. So yeah, they've definitely left behind a little bit more than the uh, other bin did. It's not a problem, certainly not a problem at all. Let's see if I can get a, another handful here. You can see it's coming along with some leftover, uh, a little bit more of the leftover paper that the food had been bundled in last time. All stuff that's gonna serve as good bedding for the next reload. Once we get done, we can scatter all that stuff right into the feeding area. Okay, so this is definitely getting some good weight already. Whoops, almost dropped it there. I see a few more pieces that we can certainly pull out easily. This all looks to me like it's uh, pieces of apple peel or apple skin. I didn't peel the apple, so I don't know if I can call it apple peel. It's apple skin, I believe. And there's obviously castings all over the place too, but I believe that the majority of what we've gotten here is mostly worms. And it's definitely getting heavy. And I'm, I'm starting to think that this is already well over two pounds. Seriously. Just from the weight of it. <clears throat> hmm. I don't know, should I grab more or should I leave them in here? Maybe if I leave them in here, maybe we've got a, a slightly um, closer amount of worms to what's in the other bin. Maybe by reducing the numbers less in here and reducing the numbers more in there, maybe we do actually arrive at a slightly better um, balance where the two bins do indeed have the same, roughly the same number of worms in them. So yeah, you know, I believe I'm going to treat this as the haul, basically. Because at this point, really, there's really not much over here either. But there's some really nice castings in here. They're doing such a great job. And the material just doesn't seem quite as damp as it is in the other bin either. So I've never felt the need to really apply countermeasures to the moisture as if it were an issue, as I did in the other bin with all those dry leaves. But yeah, I mean, all you got to do is just check right on the outskirts of the feeding area, and there you go. Just tons and tons of worms in here. Yeah, I don't think I got too much to worry about. I think this is a pretty <laughs> densely populated bin as well. Let's check out what's happening on this side too and see what we got. Yeah, pretty much more of the same. Lots and lots of happy, well-fed worms. Alrighty, let's, uh, let's get their feeding in here and let them get back to work. Like I usually do, I'm just going to open up a nice crevice to put the food into. And as I typically do, I'm just sticking to the center, putting the food right down the middle. And we can pile in all the stuff that we push to the side. Like I've got to go overboard when I've got an entire apple. That's probably quite um quite enough to fill up one of these little bundles alongside all the other little scraps going in there with it. and you can see how spoiled it was when I put it into the uh, into the food bag it just got squashed by the rest of the stuff that was in there I got a feeling that that stem is going to take a little time for it to break down I'm sure the rest of it will go quick but that stem will almost certainly take a little extra time to break down I gotta say, I uh, was a little bit skeptical when I was first seeing this feeding 
approach um, talked about on a couple different worm channels. But I figured, what the heck, let's give it a go and see how it works. And it does seem to work quite nicely. Especially after two weeks, there was so little of the paper left that had been used to wrap up the portions that had been given that uh, it did seem like having it right there alongside the food was a, was a perfect combination. The worms seemed to do away with the paper almost as quickly as they did away with the food surrounding it, or vice versa. So, we got ourselves another nice, generous feeding. It almost seems to me like this feeding is almost larger than the, uh, the feeding that the other bin got. The other bin that I think is maybe even more heavily populated than this one. Hmm. Well, whatever. <laughs> I guess this bin has a little catching up to do anyway in terms of the overall, you know, volume of material in it. So, I think the other bin is going to reach the top rim first and probably be ready for migration and harvest sooner than this one will be. If I simply use the capacity of the bin as my measure for being close to or at the finish line. So that's basically what I do is I just keep going until I feel like there's no more room left in the bin to keep going and then it's time to you know call it quits. Stop feeding and start driving the bin towards completion. So here we don't have a whole bunch of leaves to throw on top. So here I just want to make sure I do have as much of the food submerged below the surface as possible. I guess we have a little bit of a lump here in the middle where the food is, but that's fine. I usually like to try to have a fairly um, level top surface when I put my bins away. But if need be, you know, I can always live with a little bit of a lump in the middle where I know I just added a whole bunch of food. And there's a few food scraps here, maybe the stem of an old, old, old banana peel and whatnot, but I think we're pretty good. So I think these bins are really, really doing quite nicely. You know what, as long as we're doing it in the other bin, let's do it here too. Let's just take a look at how things look on the very, very outer edges. I guess more of the same, very densely populated with lots of worms and a very nice moisture content to it all. So I can't complain, definitely can't complain. I just love how this stuff flakes apart. just love how many worms are hanging out inside of it. It almost seems like there's more worms here on the outer edges than, than in the feeding area. All very consistent, very nice, all throughout the bin. Tons and tons of worms, wow. So I think just to keep my calculations simple and keep my record keeping on my spreadsheet straightforward, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to go with a rough number of a thousand worms having been removed from each bin, even though it's probably not an entire truth. And then I think we're going to end up with two bins that are now no longer 5,000 worm populations, but rather 4,000 worm populations, which is still a significant number, especially for a container this size. So it still leaves this bin as being extremely capable of doing away with a lot of food pretty quickly. Very, very nice. I guess this is, this is sometimes the telltale of what I think to be the material that's a little bit too damp, is when it sticks to your gloves and doesn't all flake away readily, it does seem like it might be just a little bit more damp than it needs to be. But not damp enough that it would, you know, raise any flags or set off any alarms, so I'm not worried. I think over time it'll just continue to um, improve. Because as long as we're not covering up with anything that's plastic, as long as all we're covering up with paper, the material will on its own continue to gradually shed a little bit of moisture, eventually taking us to a really nice crumbly material that's not too dry. But hopefully dries out enough to the point where worms would probably want to find themselves a, a more damp location and um, and their desire for a more damp location is part of what's going to help us lure them out of this material in the very end. Very, very nice. 
I really like the way these two bins are progressing. They both seem so nice. Almost perfect, if I do say so myself. <laughs> All right, I think it's time to release the gathered worms into their new bin. Let's go fetch that new bin and get these worms that we collected released. Oh, but wait, before we get the uh, worms into their new home, we had hoped to do a quick measurement of how much they weigh, right? So we've got a uh, scale here, which is already zeroed, which is good. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and plop this right on top. The weight of this extra piece of paper I'm putting on is probably not going to be enough to do anything in terms of tripping the scale. I just want to try to keep the scale relatively clean. So the first reading we're going to get here is going to be um, in pounds and ounces. And if you look at it, wow, it's quite a bit, right? So what we're talking about here is 2 pounds, 12 ounces. 12 ounces being 3 quarters of a pound all on, all on its own. But, you know, obviously we have to factor in the weight of the food and the castings that came along for the ride with the worms as well as the weight of the plastic container. But... Even with that factored in, I would have to say we're well over two, two pounds here. Maybe after I've removed the worms and cleaned off the container, I can do a quick measurement of just the container. But as long as we're um, able to see it in kilograms, let's look at it in kilograms as well. So we're talking about almost one and a quarter kilograms. There again, trying to factor in the extra weight bought on by the container and the, um, the stuff in the container that's not worms. Um, I don't know. How much do you think that actually is? I would have to say at least two pounds, at least 2,000 red wigglers in here, right? Maybe even a little bit more. I think just to play it conservatively, I'll probably record it in my spreadsheet, as I talked about earlier, as just 2,000 coming out of those two other bins and 2,000 going into our new bin. And speaking of the new bin, let's get it out here and get these guys situated. Oh, it's always so weird picking up a brand new bin because it's so light. It's like air. It just has no weight to it at all. So this bin, uh, as you saw in my spreadsheet earlier, has been um, priming, if you will, for the past five days. And I really put this um, piece of plastic on top to try to help keep the moisture that was used to build the bin inside. And you can see the moisture is condensing on the plastic as it attempts to evaporate and leave the bin and then that leaves us with a fairly damp piece of paper right beneath the plastic and I believe that that's exactly what I was after so that's a good telltale that shows that I did actually put sufficient moisture into the bin as long as I don't see any standing water on the bottom and I don't our bin was built almost ideally for being populated with worms. So here we go. Ready guys, here we go. I'm gonna see if I can sort of dislodge them a little bit from the, the walls and the bottom of the container. So I don't have to do a big job evicting any ones that remain behind once I dump it. see a couple stuck to the bottom there. Let's see if we can get them out. To join all their buddies. To join all their brothers and sisters. A lot of little baby worms in here I see. And I think visually speaking this is the best time to try to get a good visual sense of how many worms we've succeeded in collecting. And I usually feel bad for the ones that are on the very top. They just don't have direct access to the, the bedding right beneath them. So I try to spread the whole mass out to give all of them a fair chance at being able to dive down and get out of the bright lights. But it should take them a couple minutes to all get down into the container and out of view. So why don't we just leave them be to do just that. And we'll check in on them in a few minutes.
well, you know, I can still see some worms over here and over here. And sometimes I'll wait until the very end until they've all completely gone out of view, but more and more as time goes on, I've been taking pity on them and wanting to just give them a break and let them settle in and let them enjoy their new home rather than being bombarded with a whole bunch of extremely bright light from overhead. I remember somebody mentioned once what all this foamy material is, all of this uh, kind of mucusy material is, and I think some people might have said something like, you know, hey, don't disturb them, they're mating or whatever. Maybe that's just an indication of some sort of mating activity going on or whatever the case may be. I don't remember. Um, but I think it was a good thing, whatever the, whatever it was that it's <laughs> an indicator of. So I, uh, I've now got a new worm bin that makes it official. And as you all know, if you're a regular here on my channel, the first thing that happens when we got ourselves a nice new worm bin is that we tip it up on its side and on goes the new label, indicating the day that the bin was launched. And then it goes up on the shelf. All right, everyone, I've still got a little bit of cleaning up to do, and I'll get this bin over here covered up with the plastic and paper that was here before. But I won't bore you with all those technicalities. I'll take this as a quick opportunity before diving into all that other boring stuff to say thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I hope you did. If you did, as always, please remember to give me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And also consider subscribing to the channel, too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.